through the carbonate, that's how I got free. Drop it back off because there's no stopping me. Postmodern player, sample tastic, flows it frastic. I get drastic, hey, watch the plastic. Yo, I name check and leave you drastic. Welcome to the MacGuffin, episode 216. I'm Spencer. I'm Greg. Today, in honor of the holiday of Christmas, Woo! which is uh, in place of the DVD yes. rundown, yes. since there are no DVDs coming out on Christmas. Yes. Surprise, surprise. I know. What I mean, a shock. It's almost as if Best Buy and Target don't want to be open. Hard to believe. I know. But uh, needless to say, Christmas is on this Tuesday, yes. so we figured we'd talk Christmas movies. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to mostly talk about modern Christmas yeah. movies. Obviously, there are things like It's a Wonderful Life, you know, yeah. that you could go back Miracle to. Miracle 34th Street. Yeah. yeah. But we're not going to really hit on that. More of the contemporary stuff. So yes. if you want to talk about those, feel free to write in and share yes. your thoughts yes, about Yes, definitely. Um, but we are going to start off by talking about one that... It was only a year after I was born, but mm. it felt to me like it was much earlier than that, and that is A Christmas Story. Yes. Um, I think if you would have pressed either of us in our youth, we would have thought, what, like 60s, 70s? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Out. I mean, I, growing up, it was sort of my uh, impression that it was a film that my parents had grown up watching. Mm, like, mm -hmm. they were the ones who sort of had me sit down yes. and watch it because they're like we love this movie mm -hmm. and i was like oh this must be from their childhood and it, i mean since it's set in was it uh the, 40s, the 40s yeah it, it's such an appropriate slice of life and it's so well done i mean like i think it was filmed actually in columbus ohio and mm -hmm. all the people in columbus like were donating uh car classic cars from the time and like helping into the renovations and they were really into making it a period piece yeah, I mean, it's 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 even more than that. It's like, you know, a mir uh, It's a Wonderful Life. Mm -hmm. It's very, you know, holiday season. But yes. I don't know if I necessarily associate it as specifically with Christmas. Yeah. It's just more of that holiday season. Yeah, it's more like this holiday spirit than it is I mean, specifically. maybe you could argue Miracle on 4 34th Street, but like... This might be the sort of quintessential Christmas movie. Yeah, I like, mean, it's you because you've got a kid's perspective, which is always going to be the perspective of Christmas that everyone this. wants to hear. But then you've got the adult narration, so you can give it that kind of like uh, more intelligent or retrospective perspective. But it really say. is so much about the experience that like a lot of people go through in mm -hmm. the sense that you know they want that Christmas present. Yes. You know, that's all they care about. Mm -hmm. Like, and they it don't, still affects them now as an adult. That's they, why it's not surprising that it inspired the Wonder Years. Such strong belief in Santa Claus, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And the fact, I mean, it's played all the time on TNT and stuff doesn't uh, hurt for yes. sure. <laughs> it, I mean, it just it feels like this is sort of like the go-to movie yeah. for a true Christmas sort of movie. Yes, which is funny considering that the guy's, uh, Bob Clark's previous movie, not as probably well-known and well-loved, even though, st which would be Porky's. <laughs> One and two. Yes, that's right. <laughs> I, I personally, myself, go more towards the um, Loose Cannons mm. movie, which mm -hmm. is essentially like a knockoff of Lethal Weapon. That's right. About yes. a cop Gene who's... Gene Hackman or something? Gene Hackman, yes. Dan Aykroyd. Oh, yes, and he's, that's right. It's a cop who's sort of stuck with this actual mentally... Um, <laughs> unstable? Unstable individual yes. who has like a multiple personalities disorder mm -hmm. that they're supposed to solve this crime. And yeah, it's um, <laughs> it's definitely up there. And then, of course, you've got like Rhinestone and Baby Geniuses on his record as well. <laughs> Believe it or not, though, this film was actually nominated for a Writers Guild hmm. Award. So this was, I mean, even back then, it was yeah. really a popular film beyond that. I mean, the, and this is something we should say for all of them, that largely Christmas movies are like comedies. You're not going to yes. get a lot of award nominees. Yes. I mean, people generally just gloss over them when mm -hmm. it comes to awards. They're, they're favorited by, by the masses, but not um, really focused on by the critics. Which, I mean... Which makes sense. May you know, or may it, not be fair, but, you know... But I, I, I can say it kind of makes sense just initially based on the idea of taking a well-established trope and just mm. trying to make another movie in that theme. Sure, Not like sure. this is, but with the idea of, oh, sure. no, let's make a Christmas movie. Sure. So. Moving right along, we're going to jump uh, a few years forward to one of your favorites, mm -hmm. and that is Scrooge, yes. starring Bill Murray, the story of an ad executive who's mm -hmm. taken through the basic the Christmas, Christmas Carol, Carol. Mm -hmm. uh, the Dickens-based story about you know seeing ghosts of was it yeah. past, past, present, present and future, future yeah. and uh, reevaluating how things are. Uh -huh. And this takes place during you know the quintessential. Bill Murray sort of period of his life. Mm -hmm. You know, we're getting like, you know, the Ghostbusters yes. is Bill Murray, you know, all those sort of like sarcastic mm -hmm. stripes. Stripes. Yeah. Uh, over the top, 
uh, gr- gritty ish mm-hmm. kind of Bill kind Murray of mean, work. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. spirited character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, we're sort of like it's com- it's funny, but there is that sort of scathing yes. meanness. Yes, and the this is time. one of those ones where I think more than anything else, Bill Murray's uh, me- negative or mean attitude is uh, much more relevant to the story mm-hmm. rather than just his level of humor. Sure, so. sure. And it's, I mean, it's, it's definitely, it's, I mean, believe it or not, it's Richard Donner, which oh, is wow, an amazing yeah. thing about it. He wow. did, you know, Superman, Lethal Weapon, Radio Flyer, which I personally mm-hmm. love, Assassin's Timeline. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting to think about that this actually got n- nominated for a uh, be- Academy Award for Best Makeup. Wow. Like, I mean, it's got some interesting makeup stuff in yeah. it, but I, it's not the first thing I think about when hmm. I see this movie. Who did lose to? Beetlejuice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Which, I mean, makes total sense. Yeah. I mean, you can't beat Beetlejuice. Interestingly enough, connecting the two of them, mm. the score of this was done by Danny Elfman. Uh huh. Yeah. So that's a busy world. year for Elfman. Seriously. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, it's, it's got a, a great performance by Mill Murray. It's mm-hmm. one of the more interesting sort of spins on the Christmas Carol yeah. mythology. I would if say, you will. because rather than just trying to make them the same old ghosts in whatever setting you put it into, all the ghosts are kind of relatively like updated. Like I think yeah. the ghost of Christmas Christmas presents like a cab driver or yeah, is that Carol past? Kane. That's Carol Kane. Oh yeah. Past as uh David John. Yeah, Johansson. that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, yeah, who's a cab driver, and then Carol Kane is kind of more like a tooth fairy esque. Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting to sort of see when they adapt things like that. I mean, uh, I think they sort of did a Death similar is... thing with Ghosts of Girlfriends Past. Yes, that's the right. The Matthew McConaughey film, but mm-hmm. I mean, I, I like sort of trying to spin things in a new yeah. way. I mean, it's not you know necessarily a remake of yeah. just the same story every and time. It's funny because you know while I don't think the makeup is Oscar worthy, uh, I do still remember yeah, to this day sure. the Ghosts of Christmas Futures element of this film being one of the most terrifying elements of a Christmas story for yeah, me as a no, kid. It's, it's, def- it's definitely a fun film. I definitely yeah. think, you know, it's probably underappreciated. Yep, and, and I just like be. that uh, all Bill Murray's actor brothers are in the movie, too. Um, Joel, John Joel and Brian Dole, Doyle Murphy. True, true. Mm-hmm. Speaking of another Christmas classic, though, yes. you got to mention Christmas Vacation. Yes. The National Lampoon entry into that from mm-hmm. the uh, was it the Griswold clan. Yes. This is kind of an interesting one if you think about the vacation movies because this is the only one where they don't actually go anywhere. Yeah. This all takes place at their at home. That Griswold I home. I mean, I guess you would uh, say uh, everyone comes to them. Yes, which is bringing it back to the Richard Donner, the Griswold home. Same home that Murtaugh lived in in the uh, Lethal Weapon films. Wow, that's funny. It's, I all, think, it's all interconnected. Yeah, it's on the Warner Brothers uh, studio back lot is when the, that whole street, which I think has also been in... Um, I'm sure. Like, a, yeah, a couple other movies. Yeah, I'm sure. A lot of movies. But, it, I mean, it's sort of, I mean, in terms of, like, I think, you know, we've talked about this before. What, what it, Where do you put this in the hierarchy of uh, vacation movies? I think movies? it's probably my favorite. Hmm. I won't say it's the best vacation movie. Because I would agree, I think we've discussed I think we can bit. say, you know... Vacation is the best vacation movie. But I think Christmas Vacation is the best film of the vacation movies. Eh, interesting. You know, I think um, we both agree that it goes European and then Vegas. Yes, okay. yes, okay. yes. Those, those are, are the bottom four, two. Clearly, yeah. clearly. In terms of, you know, I, I love Christmas Vacation. I think it's a lot of fun. I mean, I think... Um, it's interesting because it also shifts the was it the Rusty Audrey dynamic yes, so that's that right. Audrey's older for the first time than Rusty yes. and you've got Juliet Lewis and Johnny Galecki as which the kids, so which crazy. is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> I like it a lot. I think you know in terms of like just the actual interesting elements, I think I like Vacation more. I mean, I like I like the trope of Wally World. Yes, I like John Candy as a oh, security God. guard there. Yeah. I like you know dealing with the grandmother. The you whole, know the like, dog, Christy Brinkley, Christy element, Brinkley yeah. which was great. Um, the dealing with the dog who mm-hmm. ends up dying. Like it's, <laughs> there's so many of those little nuanced story subplots. Yes, they're so funny in the original. I think I might put that one above it, but I mean. This one's definitely solid. I think the one thing that kind of slightly brings it down for me is that it's got more of a um, cousin Eddie. Uh, like, you don't I like you don't like I, I like cousin, cousin Eddie, Eddie in hmm. in bits, but okay. I feel like it kind of becomes a little overwhelming. I see. Like how dumb he is. Like it really is just like oh cousin Eddie, he's just so dumb. Yeah, I can and, see that. I also think it's weird to think. I realize now that I, this might have been the first vacation film I saw. To be honest. I, could, I mean, it's it's very. I mean, we were. I was seven yeah. when this came out. So, I mean, so it's like, very plausible. Chronologically, I don't think I maybe realized till later that the vacation movies were even related, other mm. than having. You know, well, this is very different from the rest of oh, them, yeah. so it would make sense. True. I mean, yeah. and you know, it's it's got good stuff. Like I, I like Julia 
at Louis Dreyfus as sort of like one mm, of the obnoxious yes, the, the no- neighbors, neighbors yes. and stuff like that. I mean, the obviously, aspect of the tr- like the the way too big tree. Yeah, I mean, I mean it, there's the, 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 too many Christmas lights. It takes so many of those Christmas tropes and just blows them out of proportion. I think that I might be it. one of the things that I like about it the most is that it's sort of perhaps the most relatable yes. of the vacation movies. Like the rest of them are very funny, mm-hmm. but they're horrible so, in-laws. I mean, yeah, everything. It's just wrong. the other ones are so out of sort of the realm of like most people's mm, experiences. Yes. Like you not know, everyone goes on road trips or goes or to you know has like a grant a parent die and they decide yes, to continue on the trip they drag a dog to us like these things don't actually yeah, occur yeah, on yeah. most people's trips so this is probably the most relatable one and i also think it's interesting to note that um possibly in our entire list i'm not 100 percent sure but uh this is one of the few films that while it's a christmas movie doesn't take place on christmas day it's mm. all leading up to up to and including Christmas Eve, but never actually gets to Christmas Day. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Got to give a lot of shout out to uh, John Hughes, though, because yes. he's, I mean, you talk about people have an impact on Christmas. While he didn't direct this movie, he wrote and produced it, and mm. um, he's clearly had a yes. massive impact because the next one we're going to talk about, Home Alone, he also wrote and produced. Yes. And that's, again, you know, sort of a quintessential. Christmas movie in a lot of ways. That mm-hmm. and Home Alone, too, for that matter. <laughs> it's, I mean, I actually heard an argument just uh, earlier today about why Home Alone Two might be one of the best analogies. I know, of I know, you've told me that before. Well, no, not just the not just that it being the best of the two movies, but being a good analogy of Christmas because it's essentially the same thing but slightly different, but still enjoyable. And that's the embodiment of Christmas every year is that it's always essentially the same thing but a little different, yeah, which I just find an entertaining. That's, a, that's an interesting comparison. idea. I mean, I think. I mean, I remember. This is probably the first one of this list that I saw in the theater. Oh, yeah. Like, I remember very much seeing it. And it's sort of, much like A Christmas Story, really a very sort of relatable thing as a kid. I yes. mean, you know, every kid... Who doesn't want to have those adventures as oh, a totally, kid? Oh, totally, totally. I think, I think we all probably hoped our house got robbed well, when we were home well, alone not only, after well, this. Not only having those adventures, but thinking we're so clever that we could come up with these things mm-hmm. to, like, stop yep. intruders if we came across them. I mean... I remember as a kid also wanting to find that movie, and then it was really depressing to find out like a year or two ago that the whole like "Stop You Dirty Animals" that movie he's watching oh, yeah, fake. is fake. Yeah. They made it just for the movie. Oh, yeah. That th- blew my mind. I think it? I used that on a film or fiction at some I was point like, too. Oh man, really? Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> Angels with Wings or whatever yeah, yeah, it was yeah. called. I want to see it's, that. You know, it seems like it would be perfect. They honestly <laughs> should make that. But yeah, that's one of those the best uh, fake movies mm. ever in a film for mm-hmm. sure. I mean, it's just I mean, and the impact of this movie. I mean, we talk about like a Christmas story being marathon. And it's like Home Alone was, interestingly enough, was the first Western production after the fall of communism that was aired in Poland. Mm. And because of that, it is still a, like the, one of the most traditional holiday movies they have. It's been aired on national TV during prime time in Christmas season every year since 1990. Wow. In 2011, it aired on December 23rd, so not even Christmas Eve, but two days prior, with an audience of over 5 million, becoming the most popular show ever aired in the Christmas season in Poland. Like, that's pretty crazy. crazy. I mean, I think, you know, at its core, it is actually a pretty good story about, you know, family. Like, it really really does Mm -hmm. a good job of sort of reinforcing the values that Christmas really is about. I mean, granted, there's this crazy story about, like, defeating... But really what it comes down to is how he would... Everything would just be so much better if the whole family I mean, he learned to appreciate Mm -hmm. his family. Like, you know, as much as he hates them in the beginning, he learns that really he does care about them Mm -hmm. throughout his... I mean, the end of his Mm -hmm. story. I mean, it's really... It is the core. (laughs) And it's funny to think about, you know, you think about Macaulay Culkin obviously becoming famous for this movie. I mean, he was an Uncle Buck and other things Mm -hmm. before this, but this is really the breakout role. Yes, definitely. I mean, he was nominated for a Golden Globe for his performance as Best Actor, and the film was nominated for Best Comedy or Musical at the Golden Globes. Sadly, it lost to Green Card... Um, and it lost. He lost to Gerard Depardieu from Green Card for his performance. <laughs> Something I which you know, if you were to go ask, you know, I think a hundred people. Let's say we were to go outside and ask a hundred people which okay. film they prefer, Home Alone or Green Card. I would be willing to bet that like sixty percent of them are like, "What's Green Card?" I, I would bet that probably less than ten percent would say would not say what's green card yeah. or what's is that a movie yeah. or yeah. what do you mean yeah. and so it's just it's funny I mean, the fact that I even know that it's Gerard Depardieu it's before you said that yeah. name it's surprises me yeah it, I mean it's it's I, I think it's such a funny film and such an important movie yes. that it really probably deserved 
those awards, mm. especially when you look back in retrospect, it really it really shows you how significant the film it's was. True. Like, I mean, it it is such a beloved film. I mean, people like Brandy watch it every year mm. at Christmas. Makes so, I mean, that. it's it's. I mean, I don't think a lot of people are doing that for Green Card. So. <laughs> Well, Plenty of people doing it with Christmas Vacation, though, like this and, guy. And we got to give a shout out to uh, Joe Pesci and Daniel Stern too, oh, because God. such interesting choices. I mean, this is the same year as Goodfellas, mm-hmm. so to pick those people is such a <laughs> brilliant uh, casting decision because they did such a good job. Yeah, because they're both very. Uh, I just I don't know. I, I think they felt they feel out of place as kids characters, totally. but they feel very realistic. But they work so well. I, I just love the little things about this movie, like the fact that. Buzz's girlfriend, woof, is actually a, a, a guy. Yeah. Because they felt it was too mean to make that, John Hughes felt it was too mean to make about that girl. joke about a girl. So That's they put funny. a guy in girl's clothing. He's a nice guy. Yeah. What can you say? 80, 80 sensibilities. We don't want to insult people Technically yet. 90s. But no, like. it's, it's um, fine, fine. <laughs> still a little bit of 80s, though. We'll give it to you. Moving right along to another one that uh, you had brought up. Yes. The Muppet Christmas Carol. Yes. Not a Muppet. The. The Muppet Christmas Carol. <laughs> and this is the Muppet interpretation of the Charles Dick. Dickens, a Christmas Carol yes, story. Yes, Michael Caine playing uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. Yes. And uh, Ra- Rizzo and um, Gonzo playing essentially Dickens, yes. the narrator yes. Dickens that floats along and kind of winks at the audience. Which always... You had mentioned this previously when we've talked about movies, but mm-hmm. this is the change from Jim Henson. Yes, this as is the Kermit. first Brian Henson uh, project because yeah. this is after the first. Uh, Full-length Muppet movie after Henson died. And this is when Steve Whitmire yes. took over as Kermit from Jim Henson. Yes. Which is probably the biggest sort of Man. transition. I mean, there are a lot of Muppet characters over time, you know, between this and Sesame yes. Street. But Kermit the Frog is probably the quintessential es- Muppet. Especially, especially, I would say, because Sesame Street is generally being viewed by a continuously young audience. Mm. Adults aren't generally watching Sesame Street and going, hey... Big Bird sounds slightly different if he does, sure. you know. But Kermit, Kermit is the most famous Muppet. So you can't, I mean, that's quite, I, I'm amazed that they were even willing to try with someone else's voice. And the yeah. fact that it's been successful just tells you the but skill of the Muppet I mean, studio. Of all the people you could probably get to do it, Steve Whitmire is right up there. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. it's like Jim Henson, Frank Oz, and Steve, Steve Whitmire, Whitmire are yeah. probably the most influential mm-hmm. or important people involved in the Muppet yes. franchise. The three of them have been involved were involved for so long or still involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean it's it's hard to say that, you know, if there was ever a worthy successor, it was probably Steve Whitmire. Yes. So yes. And this was the the beginning of the Muppets kind of taking and I think it was probably more Disney's idea. Probably. But that like Hey, we have a well-established fa- franchise that hasn't mm. done anything in a while, and we have well-established franchises of like written stories. Well, Let's I, just I, mesh I, them together. I think, I think it's more more uh, more than that. It's not was not open source. It's um, mm, okay, yeah, uh, Creative Commons or whatever. Yeah, you know the the material is not yes. copyrighted at this point. Free so you license. Can, or, yeah, you can oh. you can take that story yes. and repurpose it without having to pay. You know, was it Robert Louis Stevenson or uh, Charles Dickens, Dickens in this yeah. case? Being a Robert Louis stands for tre- Treasure Island. Yes, that's and you right. Don't, you don't have to pay these people mm-hmm. the money to take their stories and use them. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, it was certainly an easy source of creating new Muppet stories, but I personally prefer the more original Muppet I do adventures as well. myself. I do as well. I, I But I would, I will say that uh, Muppet Treasure Island and Muppet Christmas Carol are, for, for what they have to be, they did a good job at picking at least a well-seasoned main yeah, I mean, actor to go with it. Because you have Michael Caine in one and Tim Curry in the other. That's pretty... I mean, you know... solid actors. I mean, in terms of, like, the Muppets, like, I'm not going to, like, absolutely crap on anything the Muppets have <laughs> yeah, done. I mean, yeah. I just enjoy them. I just, I just prefer their more original stuff more, so... Understandable. Jumping forward... A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jumping forward a little bit, we're going to drift into a different kind of Christmas mm-hmm. movies. Obviously, we've talked about mostly traditional Christmas movies yes. thus far, but there are you know, horror movies like, you know, was it Black Christmas yes, or stuff yes. like that? Obviously, Jack talk, Frost yeah, movies. Yeah, you could talk about, you know, even things like Die Hard and Gremlins are sort of yeah, Christmas-based at the same time. Bad Santa. Yeah. We're talking the... Billy Bob Thornton. Billy Bob Thornton, Terry Zweigoff movie mm-hmm. about a... Man who's uh, a thief yes. but does it under the guise of playing Santa Claus yes, at he's a malls. mall Santa, and then he kind of uses that to case the malls that he is going to then rob yes. with the friend of his, or with his help of his elf. Tony Cox. Yes, his who's elf. Who's a, a little, little guy. <laughs> yeah, little person. Um, you know, but so funny. 
Such it's it's sort of interesting because it's I mean he is a bad guy in a lot yes, of ways yes but at the same time he does have some redeeming qualities mm-hmm. you know he, he he does look out for the kid mm-hmm. in the movie uh, well he's even though taking Barely. advantage yeah. of him yeah. still but he yeah. still looks out for him yeah. you know I, th- I I mean I personally I mean depending on how you interpret it I think his life does cause him to become an alcoholic like mm, it's because yeah. of his circumstances that drive him to drink I mean he's I agree he's, with that. he's so um, broken down by his mm-hmm. life that, you know, the only way he's able to get through it is to be an alcoholic. Yeah. I mean, he's not necessarily a likable guy, but... I mean, the name really says it all of this film. Sure. Bad Santa. I mean, and Billy Bob Thornton admitted that he was genuinely intoxicated for most of the filming, which shows... Probably, yeah. A- appropriately. Carabier method acting. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, but, I mean, I think this is also probably the only film that we can say on here where the main ca- character or the titular character even doesn't actually learn a fully learn a lesson in the sense of like having a Christmas like the what is it the, like the turnaround the like changing their character because really in the end he has some change and some growth but he still loses I mean the Christmas story doesn't do you, end positively with him but I mean I, I mean I, I mean I guess in the sense that like it, it's one of the few that doesn't end for the main character on a positive note but I'd say, I, mean. I mean I'd say he had a turn I mean he he, he gets shot trying to take the That's elephant true. to the kid like I mean if that isn't like you know a positive spin like I don't know what is I mean he's really sacrificing himself to do the right thing All right. All right. so I mean I, I mean I don't necessarily go quite as far as you do but it's definitely a much more um, gritty sort of mm-hmm. approach to Christmas than yes. the ones we've and I would say that the so like far. Christmas message is more of the kids story than it is yes. his. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's true. You know, it's, it's about redeeming sort of Santa Claus in the mm-hmm. eyes of a kid. And just I like, because we're talking Christmas movies, I like the fact that the unrated version, Badder Santa, uh, has a record for the most profanities in a Christmas film with 170 uses of fuck. 74 uses of shit, 31 uses of ass, 10 of bitch, and 1 of bastard in their various forms. I would imagine this is one of the few in which a Santa Claus gets fucked, too. Which, yeah, probably. very, very strange Lauren Graham yeah. moment yeah, there. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. No, whatever. Their yeah. Santa Claus yeah. fetish. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. <laughs> to each their own. Yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure there are a lot of people that have that. Right? I'm sure that this, if there weren't already, this website sure kicked off that part in a lot of people's brains. I'm sure. I'm sure. Uh, same year, though, in a very much more traditional sense, yes. Elf came out. Mm-hmm. The Will Ferrell, I guess you'd call it a classic. Yeah. Uh, I would say if something gets a Broadway musical ten years after, less than ten years after it's been made, that might consider it a classic. This is from Jean Favreau, sort of his first... Um, I would say breakout hit. I mean, Made was enjoyable, yeah. but it was essentially a very swimmers-like film. And, and those Zeth- were all still very indie at that yeah. point. And Zathura, I mean, was technically a sequel to Jumanji, but yeah. never really achieved the cult status of yeah. Jumanji. So this one was a huge breakout hit, mm-hmm. and probably one of the first Will Ferrell breakout theatrical yeah. hits as a lead actor. Yeah, and it's his first film after leaving Saturday Night Live, mm-hmm. so it makes sense that he probably has the time to actually commit himself sure. to a lead actor. Role. And we also got to give a shout out to Zoe Deschanel breaking out, because mm-hmm. she had been in a lot of movies before this, but I think this is the first one that really yes. put her in a star category yes. and led her to be the even lead though, in films thereafter. Even though she was creepily blonde. <laughs> yes, yes. And this also sort of kickstarted her musical career as well, because yes. she sings in the movie. Too much popularity, I would mm-hmm. Say. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the story of a boy who's raised as an elf <laughs> who's brought back to who the finds real out, world. Yeah, in adulthood that he's not actually an elf and that he has a real human father in the real world. Who he goes to try to find. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a funny film. I, at, I enjoy at, it. At heart, a, a fish out of water film, as we've Which said. Which is a very many... popular trope yep, to especially use. Especially for comedy. I think this is probably a little bit more on the vanilla side for me. Yes. Um, I, I think it's definitely enjoyable, but it's really a very traditional sort of sense of humor. I would almost say it's the most vanilla movie here. Oh, more yeah. More than totally. Muppet Christmas Carol. Oh, yeah. yeah, I would say so. I mean, because even Muppet Christmas Carol tries to have that like Looney Tunes Muppets esque adult humor that slides right under the kids' noses. Mm. Elf 
the majority of the humor in Elf that is like dirty is like little kid humor, like burps or you know things. Yeah, like that. I mean, I like, guess you would not... say maybe like the interaction with the uh, Peter Dinklage sort of is a yeah. little bit yeah. of closer uh, to the darker, darker humor, yeah. but I mean, for the most part, it's like you know a, a man child trying mm -hmm. to learn how to live in like a regular world where yes. he's eating like spaghetti with chocolate <laughs> for food and stuff like that. So it's sort of like it's it's cheesy and it's sort of it's again funny to see a, a traditionally serious dramatic actor like James Caan. Yes, and it's like Mary Steam. Mary Steenburgen yes. plays the stepmom. Yeah, she's great. I, I mean, her. it's 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 an enjoyable film. It, is, it definitely yes. is not necessarily my top. Yes, classic I, I, Christmassy I, type film. I, I think I can understand like because it's so vanilla why it's so popular for a holiday yeah. film because I mean, that is a time when people want something that everyone of all ages can kind of crowd enjoy. pleaser. Yeah, people definitely. like those. You know, yeah. it's, you know, children to grandparents can watch it. Yes, and I won't really. insult it by saying lowest common denominator type mentality, but similar with the humor of like don't have the humor be too far in any one direction. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, of I middle I, of the road. I mean, I, when you say lowest common denominator, I think it's just appealing to all crowd without yeah. sort of um, pushing anyone off. And I think I that there that. is something to be said about that. I mean, yeah. that's true. So, And I think it's great for how it brings the circle back around because the elf Ming Ming, who appears briefly in the film, is played by none other but Peter Billingsley from A Christmas Story. That's pretty, that's mm -hmm. pretty awesome. Finally, the last one we're going to talk about is, again, another sort of <laughs> alternative spin on Christmas, mm -hmm. and that's a recent uh, creation, Rare Exports, yes. A Christmas Tale. Which is on Netflix Instant, if you are curious to watch it after and us talking about it. We did a roundtable about it, so after you yes. watch it, listen to the roundtable and hear what we have to say about it. Because it I was, wish I was there for that roundtable. It was a good roundtable, and it was the first time I think a bunch of us had seen nice. the movie, too, so yeah. it was really um, fresh. I think I had heard the MacGuffin talking about how great of a film it was, and I think I went into yeah, it relatively it open. I watched it. Like, I didn't look it up. I normally, when I look into a foreign film I haven't seen before, I do the whole Wikipedia IMDb sure. research on this one. I was like, oh, it's Finnish? Yes. Right? Subtitled? Let's do it. And Recommended it's, by people who like Troll Hunter. Yes. Done. <laughs> it's it's the story of a kid in Finland who mm -hmm. sort of stumbles upon these weird people dressed as Santa. Yes. Well, there's this archaeological dig going yes. on, essentially. Well, simultaneously, their ra town reindeer start disappearing. Yes. It's like one of their major exports because they're in Finland. And it's sort of discovered that these weird Santa characters are mm -hmm. trying to unleash the real Santa, yes. who's essentially... A More Krampus? Yeah, maybe? yeah, exactly. Yeah, Krampus. Yeah. Sort of a vengeful spirit of the mm -hmm. holidays. Yes. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it, they, and then he's tasked with sort of stopping this from mm -hmm. occurring. And it's, I mean, it's definitely a much more dark film, which yes. is pro definitely not appropriate for all audiences when you think Christmas movies. That's true. But it's such a unique and interesting movie yeah. that's really a lot of fun. For such a dark uh concept to have it from the perspective of a child and have the child be the main character was I think a very brave uh, move on their part. I think the thing that sort of related to in my sort of uh, perspective was Dead Alive. Ah, and yes. sort of how beloved that was in New Zealand. Yes. This is sort of more, similarly beloved in Finland. Mm. I mean they have apparently something called the Juicy Awards okay. there. And it was nominated for Best Cinematography, Best Music, Best Sound Design, Best Editing, Best Art Direction, or uh Best costume design. Sorry, it wow. won all these. Wow. Not just nominated. It won wow. all these. But it was also nominated for best film. So it was very, wow. very popular. Way to go, Finland. Finland. Yeah. So it's it's a very well executed movie. Yeah. Very yeah. quirky, but very well done. I mean, how many times do we even hear about Finnish movies hitting the American mainstream with any credibility, let alone enough that often. they're on Netflix Instant and that you know, we're trying to pimp them out to people because they're that good and they yeah, win all these often. awards. Like, I love it when stuff like that happens. Little European countries just come out swinging. I love it when a plan comes together. <laughs> I mean, you know, that being said, the one sort of bummer to me about the film is it's sort of structured in a way similar to Lord of the Rings, mm -hmm. where the majority of the film is the build-up to this yes. great evil, but agree. not exactly the experience of that I feel great like evil. like 15 more minutes at the end. I would have, loved, I would have loved more a, Santa. Like, yeah, that's, just like even five minutes at the end. Like, you know, um, like in the end of Hellboy when the crazy tentacles start coming out of the first Hellboy okay, and all sure. the crazy tentacles start coming out of the sky and you're like, yes, payoff for all this big, Waiting, scary yeah. hesitation. I feel like 
if they just broke out of the clouds and the movie stopped there. That's almost kind of how Rare Exports does with the Santa. I really want more. Yeah. I want maybe a sequel. Maybe there should just be Rarer Exports. Yeah. <laughs> more, yeah. Santa's more back, rare baby. Exports. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That'd be awesome. But, you know. Back I, for his horns. Check it out. Definitely worth checking out. <laughs> that being said, those are our Christmas yeah. films we're talking about. Obviously, there are a lot more. You know, we mm -hmm. didn't talk really horror films. We didn't yes. talk old school Christmas films. There are mm -hmm. even more modern ones that we didn't, we didn't talk, talk very about. many animated films. There's Definitely a lot of animated it. Yeah. films. So that... Definitely share the ones that you like with mm -hmm. us. We'd love to hear more about that. And, uh, you know, join us next time for our uh, 2013 1 1 uh, <laughs> DVD rundown. We're breaking We'll be into very the hungover, we yes. promise. Uh, Lots of bags yeah. under our eyes. We'll carry yes. extra bags. Yeah. yeah. So that'll be a good one. And uh, <laughs> give us your feedback at MacGuffinPodcast.com, Twitter.com slash MacGuffinCast, Facebook.com slash MacGuffinPodcast. Yes. Phone number 323-761-9842. Spencer and I aren't going to be doing much over these holidays, no. but hiding from our family and social media. So please, let's start feedback. some conversations. Feedback. We love it. Yeah. Uh, we're on iTunes. Mm -hmm. We're on Blip.TV. We're on Miro, Roku. Good old Roku box. Yeah. Get glue it. Or check in. Check in. Get glue. Yeah, that's what I meant. Get some stickies. <laughs> get stickies over the holiday. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Give us feedback, though, yes. on iTunes or mm -hmm. on social media or wherever. We'd love to interact with you guys. Indeed. And have a happy holidays. Yes. Man, I can't speak. We'll see you next time. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to bite the side. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.